Hey everyone! Today we're going to look at some pricing information, surprisingly. I had to go on a little journey of discovery to find some details, and I'm going to share them here in case they help anyone save some time. I had just finished doing a video with AI Dungeon not too long ago, and I had come across the Steam version, personally. Anyone familiar with my channel knows I'm not afraid of a bad game or mixed reviews, so I dove right in, not really knowing what I was getting myself into. I was super impressed by the technology that runs this system. These stories can be terrible and great at the same time. They can be extremely creative and also super degenerate. One of the reasons you don't see a lot of this be more commonplace is because of how expensive these servers are to run. So to make what could be a very long video pretty short, I'm going to show you what you get access to if you get the most upgraded features. And I'm even going to show you some alternatives. Through my research, I've figured out that this game has a little bit of a history, and there's a lot of people with negative opinions of it because of its history. So I'm going to touch on that as well. It looks like the price of this game has changed significantly in a lot of different ways, and it's hard to track it with just something like SteamDB because there's also a web version. And that's where things get a little complicated. Because you, as a player, could play this for free right now in your web browser. Or you could purchase the Steam version for 29 bucks. Both versions are almost identical, except for at some point on the web version, you're going to run into ads. There's also the addition of the pictures that you see on the screen. That's something that is really just more for the Steam version, but they aren't pictures that are generated by the actual storytelling. So if you're getting the impression that these are like DAL-E type photographs, that's not what's going on. What ends up happening is that your story is pulling from a library of generated photographs that most of them will sometimes sort of fit into your story. So while it is cool and it is unique to the Steam version, after a while it loses its immersion and it's not much of a game changer. So if you do go with the Steam version, you end up getting unlimited commands, no ads. That part's kind of nice and you get the little pictures, but they can get a little repetitive. Now as far as the storytelling and the coherence, this isn't actually the best version of the story generator. That's actually only accessible if you purchase a different plan through the web version of AI Dungeon. And I'll keep this real simple. There's basically three different ways to pay for the same thing. I'm not going to go into the ad supported version because I feel like that's obvious. I want to show you what Voyage looks like because Voyage is the other thing that you might be wondering, oh, maybe that's worth the money. Now there's only really six things in here, but I was drawn to the AI art because, you know, that's a really cool thing that we've seen a lot of, especially with DALI and a lot of those things becoming mainstream. And I was initially, of course, very impressed with the types of graphics that you see here. A lot of them look really well done and there look to be a lot of different options for different engines and different outputs. And I figured, heck, why not? I got this seven day trial. Let's make a little tank. So excitedly, I type in all of my information. I hit generate and nothing. Turns out that even though I'd agreed to have them charge me, got the trial, I didn't get any image credits. And if I wanted to get image credits, I would have to spend an additional $5. Or if I waited until the trial expired, it would officially charge me and then I would get 20 image credits as part of that charge. So unfortunately, I didn't really get to see what this thing was capable of with the input that I put in. I started to really question what this trial included in the seven day trial. So I started looking around at the other options. This program called Loom took me a minute to kind of figure out what it was doing, but it really didn't impress me even as much as AI Dungeon itself did. Without taking up too much of your time, what you're looking at is basically the dialogue tree generated by the machine learning. So you can click on any of the boxes, you can type different things in and it'll regenerate the tree. And, th and that's it, that's what it does. So with two programs down, I was really determined to find some kind of value here with Voyage. So I moved over to the app called Things, which honestly this one I kind of found interesting, but I don't see it as being uh, fun for anyone really. Essentially it gives you a word or a couple of different words and then from there you can kind of double click them to determine what they're connected to within the machine learning algorithm. In a similar vein to something like alchemy, you can kind of combine ingredients together to turn them into the things that make sense. But in a lot of cases, this doesn't really make sense at all. And in the best case scenario where you do get it to work, you end up with a gigantic spider web that becomes uncontrollable. And again, really not fun. Next on the chopping block, we've got Medieval Problems. Now, this one is kind of like a game, but also very much like AI Dungeon, unsurprisingly. You get a castle, you get these numbers at the top of the screen, and you get a bunch of different prompts. You can type whatever you want into the prompt, 
the game does its best to interpret what you mean, and then it gives you kind of a random result. And that's the game. That's the whole game in a nutshell. I suppose if any of those numbers hit zero, you could lose. Uh, I don't know what happens if you win. I don't know if there is a win in a situation like this. So moving on. Now I'm gonna show you a picture on the screen and I really want you to think about what this picture could be. Honestly. Did you guess the happiest boy in the world? Neither did I. And that's what this whole game is like. In most cases here, even when you see the full version of the picture, you're not going to be able to tell what you were supposed to guess. So I'm really not sure about this game either. Alright, so Voyage is a bust, at least the way that it stands right now. A lot of these things are really more proof of concepts for what machine learning is capable of. And again, not very fun, but interesting I suppose if you're into that kind of thing. Now I probably have some people out there that are screaming at me internally for not tearing into how expensive a lot of this stuff is. And I'm not here to make excuses for the developer or what's happened in the past as far as what Latitude has done to try to cover the costs of machine learning, but I have a good understanding for how expensive this technology is to run. But if you're curious about the details, you could check out their website and their apology post and the explanation for how all of the pricing has changed. It also goes into a little detail for what it really takes to run the machine learning algorithms. They were even nice enough to give me some competitor names, so in a minute we're going to check out Novel AI, and I'll show you what that looks like. I do wish I would have had a chance to really play around with the picture generator, but honestly even the gallery here looked a little limited. The cost they were charging was basically $5 for 20 images, and I'm not sure if they're worth it. With projects like DALI out there and things like the random face generator, computer generated graphics don't necessarily need to be costly but they are expensive to make if that's what you're trying to do as a business. Unfortunately, after exploring the alternatives and seeing the difference in quality, it feels like Dungeon AI might be on the lower tier because they've kind of split into a lot of different directions. When I look at something like Novel AI by comparison, it just focuses on the writing and it does a really, really good job of just that. And it even has an adventure mode. But Novel AI is not a game, it's more of a creative writing tool, and to be honest, Dungeon AI is not a game, it's more of a program or piece of software on Steam. We're probably years away from seeing machine learning involved in gaming in a way that's economically feasible. And unfortunately, it seems like Dungeon AI maybe made a misstep with having a free version, and they've had to recoup some losses. Through my research, I did come across a couple of links and I'm gonna share them in the description below. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested in some options I didn't really get a chance to talk about here in the video, but that's because I didn't really have any personal experience with them. And of course, if you got anything to contribute in the comments, please do so below. I'm always interested in learning more. Also, feel free to check out the Discord if you haven't already. I'm out of here for today, but as always, thanks for watching. Frank the Tank is sexy.